Okay. I'll call this meeting to order for August the 18th, 2020. Yesterday I was sad to hear the, the news of uh, one of our employees, Tracy Houston from the Wellness Center, has passed away. I have passed on our sincere condolences to their family from, uh, from all the council and from our staff. On the agenda, actually, item number 8.4 is going to be removed from uh, the agenda. Um, this was at the request of the administration, so we'll have an, agenda, an amended agenda. So resolve that the amended agenda for August 18th, 2020, regular council meeting, regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. All in favor? Councillor Gray. Why is the firefighter chief insurance being removed? Um, the uh, administration and, and the fire chief asked for some more time on that, so there'll be more discussion perhaps at our next call meeting, but they want us to remove it for now. It's not like it's not a done thing, but they just want us to remove it uh, from discussion tonight. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the minutes of the August 4, 2020 regular council meeting and the August 11, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor and Tony, seconded by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? Councilor yeah, Gray? I think it's appropriate to have minutes of the council meeting. I think raised the city number of times. Secondly, uh, motion 8.3. I, I voted against I one mover. I voted against that. You can call it as an amendment that was passed and I voted against it. So that could be reflected. 8.3. You're talking about 8.4. It's it's it was on the agenda as 8.4 originally. I don't know I thought You're talking about the firefighters? Five minutes to 8.3. Looking at the August 4th minutes? Yeah. Okay. In the, in the council meeting, the fire, the issue of the of the um, Livingston, I moved that we have it for an extended period of time. There was a motion. Um, I voted against the motion to amend, and I voted then against the solution motion to that report. So. That's my right point. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? No. All in favor? Again. Cool. It's carried. Okay, moving down to 6.1. Result of building permits 6020 through 6320 with a total estimated value of $27,800 be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Borio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2 resolved the invitation from ACL for their AGM to be held on September the 2nd, 2020, be received. Moved by Councillor Morio, second by Deputy Mayor and Tony. Uh, this is invite for their, a their AGM, which is usually in the spring, uh, on the 2nd in the evening of September the 2nd. Um, I will be able to attend that. I can send a letter if there's anybody else that would want to attend, let me know. Discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 7.1. Do I have to refresh or something? That's why it's. Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Lentoni. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, with regards to what we had discussed on Cal about not paving, how was you your conversations with the affected uh, businesses? Uh, good. Every, well, they understood where we were coming from? They understood where we were coming from. Yeah. 
Councilor Gray. Um, from the most recently built approved minutes is because what's supposed to come to report and one of the reports that we had the <coughs> minutes of the August, uh, August 11th meeting is a report for a motion on uh, this meeting that we defer paving because it was part of the original plan. So uh, I will move that we defer paving the Main Street project pursuant to the report of the committee of the whole. Is it, uh, it is on there, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. The, uh, it's on the point. Point. What the resolution is? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just later. Got it. Okay. Any further discussion? Council so, Morio? Uh, Mr. Poole, does Public Works have uh, in their plans to address like some of the trees like on the entrances of town that are growing up or on the culverts? In the, uh, in the highway dishes? Yeah. No, we can we can see if a contractor is available. It will be basically a budget decision to figure how far they can, I guess. We do have some tree trimming that we have to do in town, but to cover highways, which is... Uh, if you can look into it, maybe have a conversation, or conversation with uh, MIT and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, it's not very appealing when you're coming into town and you see six-foot saplings and trees growing around all our culverts and hydro poles coming into town. <coughs> yeah. That's yeah. Council Friesen. Um, that's one of my issues too. Someone had come in to see me and said that the sort of signs from whatever direction that is and that is are great. You can see them. But if you come in from the north, the Thomas one of the sign is almost obliterated by trees and overgrowth. Well, that's the one that public works doesn't cover. Conservation usually cuts that. I can ask why that's not being done. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Seven two one resolved the July two thousand and twenty RCMP report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor White Tony. Discussion, Councillor White. Yeah, I had the opportunity to talk to uh, Staff Sergeant Campbell very recently, and I suggested to him that thank you so much for the information because it's important. But it felt it was valid to have a year or maybe even two years data to in fact suggest if there to identify if there are changes in some of those issues, and they might be more visible if they put it in something like a bar graph. He said he'd get onto that and get back to us when he had it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Morio and Councillor Gray. Um, does the administration know why, um, or have letters received them? Did the RCMP say why they sent the report in this format versus the provincial read template that they're all instructed to use to report to councils on? This is the first time I've seen it. That's what I mean. Like, this yeah. is not the template that they're supposed to report on. <coughs> it's a different template. Yeah, there's a. Okay. It's yeah. been forwarded to them on numerous times by D Division. And AMM's reminded um, RCP lots that there is an agreed template um, where municipalities can look at their data and compare it from municipality <coughs> to municipality versus the mix match that was there previously. So. I do recall that. Okay. Uh, Councillor Gray and the Councillor Friesen. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually thought that we had a discussion uh, about the template that didn't involve either. I, I thought that we had some problems with the template as well that came in and proposed. I could be wrong, but that was my right one. So, I do. Yeah. So I thought, and I thought that there was an agreement with the staff sergeant at the last meeting that they would be using. There was a previous template plate that was massively more user friendly, as I recall. And that's what I thought we were going to be using, which I don't think this is it. Um, this is the the one that they've been going for several months, and it may be their internal document. Thing. This is just a, like an Excel spreadsheet printout or something. Well, I suspect it's, it's an automatic printout that comes from their loading of their documents for the I, I could be wrong. 
But for me, as I said, I thought there was a different, there was a different report years ago, I know, and it was massively more user friendly and had, had more detail about timing and, and so on. And so I thought that's what we talked about. So maybe what we should do is at the next meeting, the whole meeting, get any of the reports and then speak and then decide what we want and ask the staff surgeon to come back and, and then make it clear as we want. Okay. That's I just idea. because I think we, we weren't clear and I don't recall a motion ever being passed if one of those things would be agreed that we didn't. That's my recollection, but it could be wrong. Okay. Council Freeza. I don't know if this is the time to ask, but I had a couple of calls asking about COPP and I said I would ask Council Memorial if things in the works or the process in Council Memorial. Uh, yes, it's still in the works. Uh, I reported to you the business consortium that we have. Uh, not a quick we'll something yeah. hurdles that are done. I re engaged with uh, the trainers. We're trying to get a date. Uh, people's holidays are winding down now, so we can hopefully get that up and going so that we can have the uh, uh, training session and business meeting uh, set up so that we can get going on that. So it should occur uh, hopefully in the next few weeks here. Before I go to you, Councillor White, um, Councillor, um, with the COPP, is that is it going to be easier than what we were in, in the springtime to get that rolling along, or should it make some changes to the training or, or the application process and all that? The instructor was looking at like a, a virtual training, but now that the numbers uh, where we can gather inside a facility, so like the Veterans Hall is towards the path big enough where we can still socially distance and accommodate the 30-ish or so uh, interested parties that are going to, but before the spring when we're limited to 15, we have to hold the sessions, and now we can do it all at once. And then uh, the RCP, we're able to uh, accommodate uh, getting criminal record checks done through uh, a system by emailing back and forth fourth versus having to go in good which they were prohibited so right okay thank you councillor white uh, just a comment for uh, for council or for administration you have some specific requests relative to how you want to see improvements in the rcmp reporting to us you can certainly send that to myself as chair and i can get together with other members of our team and we can try to make a formal one i don't know that we need a a special meeting to do that. So if you have a uh, something you'd like identified, please let me know. Okay. So you mean just prior to if we meet with the staff sergeant, maybe throw something to you uh, where we can formulate something or a plan of what that might look like? Are you saying should we discuss it at a committee level? No, well, for sure we will. Yeah. But I think what Councillor White is asking is if he can see some of what that might be looking like. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 722, result of the July 2020 Protective Services Report will be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7 3. Council and CO reports. I'll start with Councillor DeLaurier. Um, I had a library meeting yesterday. Um, we're, we haven't changed any, uh, we're still current in, currently in a limited opening and we. Uh, we have discussions about increasing capacity, but we decided to still maintain it at, at where it is um, for the time being. Uh, and then the last Tuesday had the Cal meeting, and I guess I, I left that very hopeful for, for one thing in particular. Um, the report as far as variations, it's kind of been a thorn in my side for since I first got here even. And I think we had, had some good discussion and a path forward where we to do some analysis on on you know if the variations themselves and what's been requested is a good tool that point you know people are pointing out in that manner 
where our weaknesses are zoning bylaw audit is, and I think it, it'll be a good tool to do some analysis on those and, and see if we can make a, a more uh, development friendly zoning bylaw still maintaining the things that, that zoning is meant to uh, achieve for us. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else to report. Okay, thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. I have nothing to report. Okay, uh, Councillor White. Yeah, it's been fairly busy. Uh, Councillor Wintoni forgot because he's a very busy guy. He sat in, and, as did Councillor Mario, and he saw about a business consortium meeting last week where a lot of uh, interesting concepts were discussed. The one that jumped to me was the complexity in opening up our schools, which is going to be difficult, the availability of grants, tourism, and there was discuss, discussion, if you have the opportunity to look at a, a website called Battered Suitcase, I'm not sure I'm correct there, but I'll be on that one, uh, if you worship Battered Suitcase, where hypothetically you can go to millions of people and it all talks about the Swan Valley and the wonderful things we have to offer. So it's really, really well done. I would encourage you to do that. Another issue that the uh, consortium is working on how to address crime in our region, the good, the bad, and the ugly, what's happening there, a, a holistic approach I think they talked about. That's a work in progress. And how masks were becoming compulsory. For example, at the uh, Super 8 in Swan River right now, I think all the staff have to wear masks, and they're encouraging their clients or guests to wear masks when they're in public areas. And I think also the uh, Friendship Center had a similar protocol happening. So. Uh, the business consortium is rolling on, got some good plans, got a good bunch of men and women working together there. Uh, PMH, we met uh, also last week, and one of the neat things that I had never thought of, ever thought of, is that they're looking at accessing an isolation building for people who have COVID, because some people, because of their, uh, where they are in life, do not have a place to socially isolate. There's no uh, property, no home, or whatever. So PMH is looking at trying to acquire one of them. And they're talking about the possibility of masks becoming compulsory. And obviously, we all follow the news. There's been some significant spikes in the province or in Brandon. So I would encourage people, if, if there was a time, to back off now because it, it's generally speaking pretty preventable if we distance. If there's obviously exceptions to that. But I would encourage people to. Uh, Distance is a big deal, wash your hands, uh, masks if you believe in them. There is debate on that at least. And another uh, positive thing, uh, I was talking to Ron Kitch, Mrs. Kitch, and she's shared with me, and I've shared it with the uh, Hospital Foundation Board. She shared at least 16 plus or minus a few names of nurses who are training in the PA right now, who are all from the Swan River Valley. And we're about 40% of our nurses right now are eligible for retirement. So I'm hoping that uh, somebody will reach out to them and say, hey, can I buy you coffee next time you're in town? We can do something. And when uh, the board decides if there's a possibility of economic uh, bonuses, that would be great. So 16 plus or minus nurses in nursing and or physio, two uh, medical people want to go into medicine or unbelievable resumes local. And today uh, a young person phoned me who has been accepted into the physician assistant program at the University of Manitoba, exemplary quality Swan Valley person again. So I, I forward all those names to the board, and hopefully somebody will say, hey, if they're in town, let me buy a coffee, or you know, give us a call, can we do something? And the board is, uh, when is that date, uh, Your Worship, they're going to have a, a presentation to us about what they can or may not do relative to acceptance. I was going to say that, Mark. Pardon? I was going to say that in my report. With that, I'll leave that alone for you. And at, at some risk, uh, I, I just I try to read them all the time. But I look at the assistant CAO and the acting CAO and uh, Mr. Poole's reports. How do you guys ever have time to do anything? There's, there's <coughs> 70 things in the list where you're re responding to the public, responding to council, responding to tax guys. You guys have a huge job. And I, I thank you so much, from, I'm sure it's fair to say, from all of us, because it, it's if you start reading every one of those things, sometimes I just that's uh, just your point. But when you look closer, there's some of them are really convoluted, and uh, it's appreciated. So thank you both, and thank your team because I'm sure there are others involved. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Morio. Um, as Councilor White had mentioned, I attended the business consortium uh, Zoom meeting where right well, a wide range of uh, topics were discussed. Um, last week I attended the. Uh, Committee of the whole meeting here. Um, we had a number of discussions. Um, 
Also, in the last couple of days, we've been getting a number of positive comments from uh, the efforts of our new bylaw officer uh, for tackling some of the uh, on site the properties and some of the issues that we've uh, got going on in town here. So, people are recognizing that there is an attempt and an effort by the town to address some of the long standing issues here. So, um, so, thank you much to the admin and Mr. Peebish for um, taking on that daunting task. Um, one of the things that was encouraging and uh, to talk about uh, coming from last week's CAL meeting was that. Uh, we have the, the bylaw, uh, municipal bylaw, enforcement bylaw, where if people have issues uh, with anything like a ticket or anything that's there, that the town is looking to uh, go to one consistent appeal process that follows the same process for every issue instead of a wide range of uh, processes that we have now. So, um, and whether it's good or bad or whatever, but uh, if not everybody knows or stuff like that, the province has. Uh, started disseminating COVID numbers by the district reporting, which uh, for some it's, it's good, and whether it matters anything or not, uh, uh, we'll leave that up to them. But uh, if you look at the map, there's a town of Swan River district and there's the Porcupine Mountain district, so it covers off the rural areas. So if people want to know a little bit more breakdown versus just to be uh, a regional health authority number where you could be halfway across the province, at least they can tell if it's a little closer to home and whatnot. Or, shouldn't make a difference of what the precautions should be, but it's reinforcing uh, some requests that are out there. So that's also posted on the Manitoba government webpage, uh, COVID-19. So that's all I got. Good. Thank you. Councilor Gray. Uh, well, through the whole meeting, uh, people already discussed it. There's seven. Or eight now reports that um, are in there that need to be brought forth to the council to be at some point. So I don't know what process we're using for that, but if action items there, so we should find some way of bringing those on to get to block the universe of unknown cases. One of them included was the parking issue from the previous meeting. Uh, Seven services were meeting yesterday. I was in the process of ten, but the reports came in. They were everything is functioning well. They have um, a brand new big work database on this weekend on the twenty second. There's one there you're certainly entitled to attend. And I think there's going to be another one here, but I was supposed to attend the meeting, which was supposed to be the week before. Uh, they canceled it. I'm not sure exactly why, and the result was I'm not sure. Uh, Rise is a meeting coming up. Uh, Mary, I think it's next Thursday as well. <coughs> and um, the Elder Chair Conference is going to cancel because of the COVID issues. Uh, their annual general meeting and it will now be September the 24th. That's it. Okay, thank you. Councillor Friesen. I just had a couple of phone calls and I've already asked about the meetings to sign and we're going to see what we do. Um, the cemetery is looking good. Kudos to Melanie uh, Yell that's out there. I'd like to say hats off to Tracy Colthard who instigated all the planting around the swan and I think it looks great. She's got natural grasses, natural grains, and flowers. and. I think it's a real showcase for when people come to town and want to see that. And I put up a Manitoba 150 sign on the terrace far ahead. Nice. Good job. You can't go close to it because of the heat pure. Okay. Thank you. For me, that probably wasn't, uh, I think everything else was covered off. Uh, I have uh, been in, in uh, back and forth with. Uh, Mr. Lusa from Shared Health in regards to the CT scanner. So that's still kind of going back and forth there a little bit with our lobbying, uh, the province for a CT scanner for Swan River, and uh, mentioning to them that uh, our Valley municipalities have uh, passed resolutions moving forward as far as the fundraising and how that's all going to work out. 
Uh, I also had a meeting uh, a couple days ago with an MLA workshop. We had uh, a couple items of discussion that's to be noted, and that was uh, obviously with the CT scanner and with him also lobbying uh, within uh, the government ranks. Uh, we talked about the Main Street West pro uh, project and the paving uh, next summer. So he's on that, and uh, he uh, that's one of his, you know, one of the top with the CT scanner. Uh, as well, but uh, we were he's lobbying pretty hard on that one as well, and he uh, will try to uh, help us arrange a meeting with the minister uh, when we're in Winnipeg in November. Uh, we talked about the ditch road uh, project as well, where that's kind of still in, in discussion with the uh, rural municipality of Swan Valley West. So uh, we'll see where that goes, but that's still uh, I think a little ways away. Um, it was brought up earlier by Councillor White about the report that is going to be coming from the Recruitment and Retention Fund and the, uh, our, our uh, I guess our hired uh, help that uh, has uh, been helping us uh, manage uh, finding uh, doctors or nurses and so forth. And they've been working on this report. It was due in June, I believe it was in June, but they asked me for some time because one of them actually got ill during this time. So uh, I don't think we'll expect to see what that report will look like actually uh, till sometime in September is what I'm thinking. So that's where that is right now. Uh, and that's it for me. Council White. Relative to your discussion, I had lunch today with uh, Alec Halischuk, one of the Lions members, and I said, I'm not speaking for Council, but you know, things are moving forward with the CT scan. Can they come and talk to you sometime? Or are you still interested? He says, Absolutely interested. For sure, we want to do something to help you help the community out. So their the peers are still on board. Yeah, well, thank you for doing that. And, uh, and I'll definitely, with the committee, be in touch with with their, that service group and, and others as like, well. I've actually had some people phoning me about it already. So uh, they're seeing that information and hopefully the press will do maybe a story on it soon and, uh, and we can get that moving along. So um, that's it for me. So we will um, go to 731. Result of the report from the acting CAO being received, approved by Mayor Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Ms. Inkelman, anything there you want to highlight or any questions? Um, yeah, I mean, see, I don't know, spill it on there. The number, as Councillor Gray said, there's a number of items that we are working on, reports that we're preparing. Um, some updated policies, uh, by lottery rights. Um, so stuff at the arena that we're working on, we're on sale policies, all that sort of things. There's a number of things. Everyone's been really busy doing all of that. Uh, tax notices are here. We're just getting them to start stuffing them to <coughs> the about charting. Okay. Any comments or questions? Councilor Morio? Um, so I mean, do we know or have we got a timeline from the um, contractors that were awarded the contract at the recreation center as to what their work timeline would be or yeah we see that today and we're actually discussing that a little bit later okay that, yeah. okay all in favor opposed it's carried 8.1 result of the Swan Lake Watershed District audited financial statements for the year ended March 31st, 2020 be received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Delorier, you have any comments on that at all? Uh, I can try and answer any questions that anybody has. But okay. Does it appear to be? For the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Councilor Gray, did you have anything there? Swan Valley Water Hill. Yeah. Well, I, I disagree with the assessment of the apportionment, and I'm not, I, I don't know that we get much value. Um, so I'm going to make what he gets. Okay. So, yeah, but we don't record that, but let's take it. Um, 
result of the paving, gutter, and curb work scheduled to be completed on Main Street in the fall of 2020 be deferred to 2021 to allow the project to be completed in an efficient manner. Ms. Paul. That is what? I sorry, thank you. Okay, let's go back to eight point two. Resolve the Swan Lake Water Yeah, sorry. Resolve the Swan Lake Watershed District 2020-2021 annual levy for the fiscal year ended March 31st, 2021, in the amount of thirteen thousand four hundred and forty one and eighty two cents be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor Moria. Um, I feel like, uh, as I agree with uh, Councillor Gray, uh, how the fees assessment comes up with, um, I don't think our, the town is in their favor, but I guess it is what it is, and that's what's been agreed to by the majority of the board that's there. So, so I think it just needs to be. We stated that uh, how the levy annual levy is calculated um, is not appropriate, at least my view. So. Okay. For the discussion, I would withdraw, but I'm not. We had this discussion about the levy, but it is what it is. Councillor Delorier, on that note, um, when does uh, the board start talking again about maybe a possibility of looking at what the levies? Uh, well, wow, just this was a they'd have to reopen their the regulations, the country regulations. That was the crux yeah, of the whole I, matter. I, understand. Was, I just thought there yeah. could be a possibility of talking. It would probably be never because why would they? They, right. they got it. Okay. Council Gray. I was going to say the process isn't within the capacity of the board to talk about the watershed district anymore. A regulation passed, it would require an order of council to change the levy. And uh, candidly, um, the amount that's spent within the town of Swan River is less than the amount of our total levies. Um, never mind the you know, two, two, the twice as much of that that the municipality of Swan Valley Watershed District gets, which is all spent <coughs> in the town. So I'm not particularly empathetic. We've already we've been there for a while, and someone's going to speak to kill this. But I'm just going to. I should be I guess we're already in for the. It's too late to give notice to not be in for this year. So, I mean, we can have that discussion about withdrawing again. We can refer that to a town meeting. If uh, we want to have the discussion again, I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember what. Further discussion. All in favor. Opposed? It's carried. Now, 8.3. Resolved that the paving, gutter, and curb work scheduled to be completed on Main Street in the fall of 2020 be deferred to 2021 to allow the project to be completed in an efficient manner. Also, it be resolved that appropriate mitigation measures be done to ensure the road sidewalks are safe for use and that a communication strategy is developed to inform our residents the changes to the project. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. On, on the second part that a communication strategy be developed, I, I hope it's already developed and it's not going to be developed after this resolution because I, I hope we've already communicated with, with people. We have. Okay. It's, it's obviously going to change this decision, right? So, like, in our like, communications, did we not, you know, extrapolate what would happen should this decision be made like that they're not getting payment they're, they're they realize they're not getting payment this year in your yeah but, okay yeah i guess this this strategy includes what we're going to say christmas next spring there's decisions there's factors i guess that are solved ahead like my team and uh, that so I guess um, this coming out of a call meeting from last week, uh, council here from uh, administration on this, and and knowing that next year that Main Street West will receive the proper care it needs to be taken care of each day after events and, and thaw and so forth, 
that there's not too much uh, pain that we have to go through during the uh, freeze and, and thaw. That is the plan. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 8.4. I guess result of the audit proposal for the fiscal years ending December 31st, 2020, 21, and 22. Submit by, I guess we're going to have to do one in there. Be accepted. So uh, moved by. We can move to oh. Council Morio and, and Councilor Friesen, but Council Morio, do you want to uh, add somebody in there? Yeah, add uh, Bassett, Old Party and Company. Okay, and to the reason for? Uh, they meet the requirements and they're the lowest bid okay. for, the, for the entire project. Okay. Requirements. So Pasco Hardy Company be accepted. That's moved by Council Morio, seconded by Council Friesen. Discussion. Council Morio. Um, I understand it. It was put out as a complete uh, package for the three entities, um, and I, there's probably some cons to separating them out where um, to different organizations based on the total separate prices and stuff like that. And then there's advantages to having it all with one firm, um, even though you pay more for, um, say the handy transit to the town, but then there's cheaper at the other ones, but the total end price is cheaper. Um, but if you wanted to maximize the savings and then divvy it up the cheapest one to each one, but there'd probably be some uh, complication and some hard heartaches where we're having to now deal with two separate auditing firms um, coming in and learning processes. Is that, is that correct? So. Yeah, I know um, Terry uh, has suggested that you know, each of the entities send out their own, their own request um, for the audit. We just look after the town as we would like to see happen. But there is cost savings doing it all the time. Okay. Well okay, Councillor Gray. Is the suggestion that we would defer the decision until we made that decision? Because once we make the decision tonight, it won't be for another three years that we're going to make any decisions. So I just want to know what the recommendation is. To go ahead with this, but just kind of keep it on that you know, in the future that we look at that. Okay. All right, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Ten point one. Result of the checks accounts as follows be hereby proof of payment. General accounts checks number two six five oh one to number two six five five seven for a total of three hundred and seventy three thousand four hundred and fifty three and fifty five cents. Payroll accounts check number forty seven oh seven to forty seven thirteen for a total of one hundred ten thousand seventeen dollars and fifteen cents. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.2. Whereas the 2020 capital budget included $12,500 for the firefighting protective equipment to be borne by the fire truck replacement reserve and the equipment has been purchased at a cost of eleven thousand seven hundred ninety-one and forty-four cents, twelve thousand three hundred forty-two sixty-five less, five fifty-one twenty-one in GST. Be and hereby resolved that eleven thousand seven hundred ninety-one and forty-four cents be transferred from the fire truck replacement reserve fund to the general operating fund. Moved by Councilor Morio, seconded by Councilor. To, uh, white discussion. All in favor? Councillor Gray. Um, so the plan always was to take it out of the truck, reserve them. Is that part of the plan? Yeah. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Ten point three. 
result of the financial statements for the seven months ending July 31st, 2020 be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Gray. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Not so much with this statement itself, but with the format of the statements in general. Is it possible to add another column to the statement that show, shows percentage of, of the budget amount that's been spent so far? You know, I know I didn't do the math on each line, but it'd be a lot easier if it was already there for us. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Like, if, if we've spent 38% of what we had budgeted and we're... And we're Ten months through the year, or if we spent 138, we're only two months through the year. Is rather than go through each line and to see, because otherwise, to see where you're at, it's a lot of work. Is that is that a lot of work to change that format? Mr. Godino, maybe you want to answer that. I can take a look at it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Gray. I have a number of questions. So it's my understanding that we uh, that. Municipal accounting um, is done on a cash basis as opposed to an accrual basis. Is that correct, Mr. Ganita? I know these are financial statements are prepared on an accrual basis, but uh, due to the requirement to have them uh, within the months, not all the bills have been entered yet. Like for example, the OSS recycling for July is not entered there yet, and, but I was given the directive to have them uh, available for council uh, before the end of the month, so. Well, I agree with you, correct, I, I appreciate that. Um, I have, though, a question, because it, it follows up on Councillor Gloria's point. When I <coughs> look at this, it appears to me that we are reporting having expended for the seven months ending July 31st, $3,245,636. But if you consider what we would normally, or what we spend, assuming equal expenditures, that amounts to $4,376,202, a difference of $1,130,566. Which would lead one to believe, if you just look at those numbers, that we were in pretty good shape because it looks like we bring up surplus. But uh, Mr. Kennedy, if you can confirm for me, I take it there are a number of big expenditures coming. I, I direct your attention particularly in deficit recovery of 42,808, transfer of reserves 408,202, fiscal expenses of $517,000, health expenditures of just over $100,000, and allowances for tax of $40,000, which means we're right about on budget for expenditures without any extraordinary expenses like the OSS uh, amount. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So we, we may in fact be uh, closing in on a deficit? Wow. I'm particularly, I particularly noticed uh, uh, environmental health sales of services. It, it, it appears that our, we will be uh, under on our projected uh, revenues there, and I'm not, I'm not sure if that's because of uh, the number of uh, voided invoices for businesses that were closed due to COVID or what, but the, the revenue there seems to be considerably less than than what we would need to meet the budget. I, I, I spoke too quickly. We obviously don't necessarily, we wouldn't necessarily have a deficit, but the only logical place where we would have excess revenue would be to reduce the amount that we craft for the reserves at this point. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I guess council has the choice not to transfer what it budgeted to transfer to reserves. What I meant was, in order to, at this point, it looks like we're going to be very close, or at least potentially, it looks to me like we have, if we're on track to have a deficit, unless we either cut some expenditures or unless we transfer, we reduce the amount that we're going to transfer reserves, or unless revenues all of a sudden take a spike. One of those three things. Fair statement? Yes. Okay. So I'm, I'm concerned that we must we should turn our attention to that because you know if we turn our attention to it in November, that might be a tad late. 
Um, there's one more thing out of the financial statement that you'll help me with. We have a receivable from Swan Valley Municipal Developers of $85,000. Is there any chance that that money will ever be collected? If, if developers uh, start selling properties for more than what they cost and incurring gains instead of losses, then, then yes, that amount will be reduced. That's the only way. And in addition, we have an inventory, presumably, uh, I'm guessing, of land. I'm not sure what the inventory is, maybe $4,000. What is that inventory? Uh, where are you looking? It's, in, it's on the financial statement. Just one moment, I'll talk about the exact line so that we can look at it together. So in our assets under other, we have inventory and then land held, uh, and then we have land, uh, or we have Swan Valley Municipal Developers as, as the $85,000, whatever it is. Then we have under other inventory of $84,111.56. What is that inventory? That that would be uh, things like granulars and. Oh, okay, so we're good on that. I'm 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 I'm, I'm perfectly happy with that inventory. But the next piece is land held for resale. Yeah, hundred twenty nine thousand seven hundred eighty dollars. It says tax titles. Is that money that we have? Is that land that we paid over? Taxes are old, and that's what we'll be recovered from tax sales. Correct. That's uh, properties that went to tax sale, but no one bought them, and so the town inherited the costs that had uh, accumulated on those properties. So that I'm clear, in addition to what Swan Valley Municipal Developers owed us, so in total, we have land debts to us of just over $200,000. That is land that we're, we're holding for something we can't sell it. And then that, what I consider to be ridiculous, uh, receivable from Swan River Municipal Development. And so we would have no way in this fiscal year, unless we make extraordinary further cuts, we'll have no way of absorbing those that are apparently um, highly speculative assets. Fair enough? Is that a fair statement? Yes, uh, our goal would certainly be to try to sell those properties at a reasonable price. Okay, so from that, Your Worship, I think we need to consider the upcoming town meeting what, what processes we have for the reduction of expenditures um, and for the um, removal of highly speculative assets from our financial statements. Subject to that, I agree with the acceptance of the national statement. They, they are, they are they, we should have actually, I don't know, did we move them already? Oh, okay, yeah, then I'm good with them because they actually represent our financial position, which is what financial statements are doing. Not that our financial position is great, that's what I'm not happy with. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. I think for 11, 12, no one's in motion. Okay. 13, resolve the pursuance of section 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, to discuss uh, requests for space and uh, press release. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Delorier. All in favor? It's carried right in camera. Okay. Result of this regular meeting, Council now adjourned. Moved by Council Gray, second by Council Morio. At 844, all in favor? It's carried. We're adjourned. Thank you.